The kind old woman. There was once an old woman who went to the forest daily to look for firewood. One day, she heard a deep groan. When she was gathering fallen branches, it sounded like a large animal. At first, she was frightened, but then, when it groaned again, she thought. Animal, whatever it is, is in pain. And as she had a kind heart towards all living things, she ventured towards the sound. Eventually, she found a large bull, who was very sick. Don't you worry, she said, stroking his head. I will take good care of you. I know all sorts of cures, you know, for every disease. Somehow, the sick bull understood. He summoned up all his remaining strength, and staggered to his feet. Then he followed the old woman towards her home. On their way, they crossed paths with the bull's former owner. Hey, old woman, where are you taking my bull? The man called out with a mix of surprise and annoyance. The old woman pulled herself up, her ancient back as straight as a sword, and she spoke with a tongue that was just as sharp. Now listen here, your bull was abandoned and full of suffering. He was. You're right," admitted the man. "He is very sick, and he smells rotten." We can't stand his stench anymore, so we drove him out into the woods to end his days. When he said this, the old woman's eyes blazed. She wagged her finger and declared, "It is wrong to abandon a living creature who has served you so well, even if he is dying." I'm going to take him home now and look after him myself. You're wasting your time, old woman. He'll never recover. The old woman continued, leading the bull towards her home. The villagers whispered praises and words of support as she passed by. When she reached home, she cleaned the bull, gave him water and medicine, and placed him on a comfortable bed of straw. His strength grew daily, and his once dull coat became radiant. The villagers marvelled at the old woman's good fortune. Word spread quickly to the bull's previous owner. He came to the old woman's house and demanded the return of his valuable animal. But the old woman stood her ground, telling him firmly. In days of despair and sickness deep. This bull you abandoned, left to weep. I nurtured him with love and care. His strength restored, a majestic affair. With me, he'll stay no more to roam. No longer yours. He's found a new home. The previous owner retreated, with his head hung low. Now all the while this drama unfolded, a spider called Gizo was watching. He was a tricky little fellow, with a knack of changing his form. He thought to himself, "Here's a situation where I can get a reward." He was so excited that he danced on his eight legs all the way to the palace of the king. Oh, great king! I have the most amazing news! Gizo exclaimed, bouncing up and down. The king, amused by the spider's antics, smiled and asked, "What is it, little Gizo? What exciting news do you bring?" Before I share, please tell me how many eyes you have. I see you with my two eyes," replied the king. Gizo's eight magical eyes swirled and rotated as he continued. But your Majesty, I have eight watchful eyes, and you know what? 
My eyes are your spies. I see everything interesting in the land and report it all to you. So you have ten eyes in total. The king chuckled, intrigued by Gizo's explanation. Tell me, dear spider, what interesting news have you spied with your eight watchful eyes? I've seen an old woman blessed with a magnificent bull. His beauty rivals that of a king's possession. Furthermore, I've heard whispers that she stole this extraordinary creature. Hmm, that is indeed interesting information," said the king thoughtfully. He decided to send his servants to fetch the bull. Giza was so sure that he would soon receive a fine reward that the hairs on his legs were trembling with excitement. But when the servants arrived at the old lady's house, the bull, now loyal to his kind-hearted savior, refused to leave her side. He lowed. With strength and resolve, I proudly declare, I won't depart from her loving care. When sickness plagued me. She healed my strife. This old woman is my guardian for life. The servants were surprised at this defiance. They grew angry and threatened the old woman. But the huge beast began to snort and stamp his foot. The servants grew frightened and returned to the king with the tale of the bull's loyalty and gratitude. And so the king gave up the idea of confiscating the bull from the old lady, and Gizo did not get his reward. That old woman has got the better of me for now, he said, and then he thought, "I still have more spider tricks up my many sleeves." And so, with a bounce in his step, he scurried back to the old lady's village. His eight fuzzy legs, ticklish with excitement, started doing what they did best: catching whispers and secrets floating on the breeze like an antenna. The village people said that the old woman was doing very well for herself. Three beautiful young girls now lived with her and looked after her. They did all her work, gathered firewood, gathered food, cooked and cleaned. This is most interesting," thought Gizo to himself. "I shall find out more." And so he went to the old woman's house, disguised as a beggar. He held out his bowl and pleaded, "Please, old woman, I have heard you have a kind heart. Give me some food, for I am hungry." The beggar's plight touched the old woman. She clapped her hands, and Gizo saw three girls jump out of the belly of the bull. Girls, fetch some porridge for this poor beggar," commanded the old lady. And one of the girls took the beggar's empty bowl to the barn, and filled it with food. This is most interesting indeed," whispered Gizo to himself. There is a reward to be gained from this wondrous story. And so, Gizo scampered back to the palace, and hailed the king, saying, "Sire, I bring you captivating news. But before I share, tell me how many ears do you truly possess?" The king replied, "Why, Gizo, I am listening to you with my two ears." Indeed, your Majesty, you may only have two ears, but in truth, you possess ten. My eight keen legs are your listening posts. I detect every murmur, every whisper that stirs the air, and relay everything interesting to you. Chuckling, the king replied. Gizo, tell me what news you have heard with your eight. Hairy legs, 
and Giza revealed, Oh, great king, I have heard something extraordinary. The old woman has three remarkable girls who possess unmatched beauty and skills. Each of them is fit to marry a king. That is indeed interesting news, said the king. If you can bring one of the girls to me, and she is as beautiful and skillful as you say, I shall marry her, and you shall have a reward. This time Gizo left nothing to chance. He transformed himself into the appearance of a high-up official, the right-hand man of the king. Then he travelled to the village of the old woman. The three girls saw Gizo approaching the house, dressed in his fine court uniform. They immediately changed into their best clothes. They wanted to look their finest for such an honoured guest. He knocked on the door and asked the old woman for water. She invited him in. Gizo sat down in the cosy abode. The old woman turned to the first of the girls. Dearie, could you please fetch some cool water for our esteemed guest? The first girl looked down at her sparkling outfit, twirling a little to make the sequins catch the light. Oh, I can't! She pouted playfully. I'm wearing my grandest gown. If I fetch water from the well, it might get all, you know, splishy-splashy. Not missing a beat, the old woman turned to the second girl with the same request. But I can't either, the second girl protested, flouncing the frills of her dress. You see, I'm wearing my most fabulous frock. If I go fetching water, it could get all, you know, soggy and droopy. Then she turned to the third girl, the modest and kind-hearted Takisi. Takisi, could you fetch some water for our guest? Takisi, always good-natured, didn't mind a bit of dirt or mud on her dress. She got up, fetched the water and returned with a smile. Once she was back, Gizo announced, Takisi, the king wants to marry a kind and beautiful girl like you. Takisi turned to the old woman for advice. After a moment, she answered, I'd be honoured to meet the king. When the king met Takisi, he was taken aback by her striking beauty and wisdom. Overjoyed, he forgot all about Gizo's reward. He and Takisi wed, living happily, though not quite ever after. After some time had passed, the king had to leave the palace to go and fight a war. While he was away, the women in the palace, including the king's aunts and sisters, bullied Takisi, for they were very jealous of her beauty and the king's love for her. They made her work, and work, and work, no matter how hot it was or how tired she was. Takisi began to grow weaker and weaker, and she even started to melt in the heat. In despair, she spoke to a little bird and asked him to fly to the king and tell him of her suffering. The bird flew straight to the king and sang in his ear. They will cut to the bone the pain she cannot bear in the palace. Torment and cruelty fill the air. Chuck it, see the queen weakens day by day. Melted by the heat, her spirit begins to fray. When the king heard the news, he was greatly alarmed. He thanked the bird for his loyalty and rewarded him. Then he left the battlefield and rushed home, 
where he found his Takise in a terrible state. She had become so hot and tired that she had melted into a puddle. In despair, he did not know what to do. He wept and cried. Oh, you cruel palace people who bullied my beloved queen! Now it so happened that Gizo the spider had seen all this, and he thought, In every crisis there is an opportunity. Now I shall surely get my reward. So he rushed to the old woman's house and told her everything that had happened. She immediately came to the palace with her herbs and medicines, which she poured into the puddle. The water sprang up like a fountain and took back the form of the lovely Takisi. The king was overjoyed to see his queen again and could not thank the old woman enough. You must come and live in the palace and all will give you respect like my own mother. The old woman smiled and replied with grace. I am content in my humble dwelling place. The joy of seeing Takise restored is my reward. No need for riches or a palace. My heart is assured. Hey, what about me? Where's my reward? asked Gizo. But the king was far too busy getting ready for his wonderful future life with Takisi to remember the tricky little spider. And I would like to say Guzo the spider learned a good lesson from this story. Do you think that from then on he resolved to use his cleverness only for good, kind and unselfish schemes? I'm not so sure. Are you? The Grateful Crane Hello, this is Richard, and Bertie's asked me to tell you a traditional story from Japan. It's rather a lovely story, but just a little bit sad. It's called The Grateful Crane. It was winter. The fields were covered with snow and the winding river was frozen so thickly that you could walk on it. A poor farmer was returning home along the river bank when he heard a noise from inside a frosty thicket. He understood right away that it was a wounded bird and his first thought was that it would make an easy catch to take home and boil in his pot. But when he parted the twigs and undergrowth, he found such a beautiful bird that he did not have the heart to kill it. It was a crane whose side had been pierced by an arrow. He pulled out the shaft and rubbed some balm into the wound. The crane spread out its wings and soared into the sky. The farmer returned to his hovel, ate half a bowl of rice and went to bed as soon as it was dark, because there was nothing else to do. In the early hours of the morning, he heard a tap, tap, tapping at his door. At first he thought it was the wind, and then he wondered if it was a ghost. At last he realised that he would not sleep until he opened up and saw who or what was there. He lifted up the latch, expecting to see a ghastly apparition in the moonlight. He was prepared for a spectre from the spirit world. His hand clasping a great knife was ready for a robber, but he was utterly unready for the face of a beautiful girl. In fact, she was so lovely that he was quite startled. He was simply amazed that anyone could be so gorgeous, let alone standing at his door. He let the girl in, and she slept on his bed while he lay by the ashes of the fire. After she had stayed with him for three days and three nights, he finally found the words to ask her to marry him though he never expected her to accept. The girl replied that she had come to his door hoping that he would ask that very question, and she gladly accepted. The farmer thought to himself, 
Until just recently, I was lonely, poor and wretched. Now I am still poor, but chance or some god has brought me happiness. But nobody can live on love alone. The winter was long and hard. The couple ran out of rice to take the edge off their hunger. The farmer said, What are we to do? I have no food, no money and nothing we can sell. He himself was on the brink of tears and he expected that his wife would either grow angry with him for failing to provide for them both or to break down in sobs. This, he thought, was the end of their happiness. But instead she smiled and said, Dear husband, do not worry or fret. I will weave a cloth and you shall take it to the market to sell. The farmer shrugged his shoulders, because they had no thread to weave. But his wife went into the one and only room of their house, and as she closed the door she said, Whatever you do, do not come in. Some hours later she came out of the room, carrying a beautiful cloth. It was embroidered with flowers and birds and was so beautiful that it was fit for a princess. The next day, the farmer took it to the market and sold it for a great sum. The couple had enough money to last several winters. But when you have money, there is a tendency to spend. You forget how careful you once were. You buy whatever you want, and you pay prices that are sometimes over the odds. In short, the money ran out, and once again the couple were poor. The farmer was again on the edge of despair, but his wife said, Do not fret. I will weave another cloth. I will go into the back room and work. But, whatever you do, do not peep in until I come out. While his wife weaved, the farmer sat and wondered how he had been so fortunate to have found such a woman. One so lovely one who loved him, and one who was able to weave cloth out of nothing. He recalled how she had turned up at his door on a winter's night, and he thought about how little he knew or understood who she was, why she had come to him, or how she weaved the cloth. He lived with her, he loved her, yet he hardly knew her. At last his curiosity overcame him. He opened the door, just a crack, and he peeped in. And this is what he saw. It was his wife, but not a woman. She was the crane that he had saved from the thicket. On the floor was an intricate pattern of feathers, and as she worked she plucked yet more feathers from her own breast. The cost to her was pain and loss of her plumage but she was ready to inflict this on herself, for him. But then the bird looked up and saw him. She let out a cry and shed a single tear from her eye. She flapped her wings and flew up and away, out through the hole in the roof that served as a chimney in the cottage. And that was the last the poor farmer ever saw of the grateful crane who had become his wife and who had plucked feathers from her own breast to keep him from poverty. He never married again, and lived to the end of his days alone. And that was the story of the Grateful Crane. Bertie says he hopes you didn't find it too sad. It's rather beautiful, and a bit of a warning not to be too curious for your own good. <laughs>